Well, today on Nation, a service industry podcast, we're talking all about 10 ways to work smarter. We all have tips and tricks that we use to work smarter, faster, and better, and that's what we're talking about today. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? It is 2021. Nothing has changed. I look around. I hope the world is going to be better this year than it was last year, but we'll only uh, we'll have to wait and see. But if it's your first time here, have a look around. Happy 2021 to you, but I have started this podcast three years ago. You got three and a half years of podcasts to catch up on, so get binging. Hopefully they are awesome, or at least halfway decent, and you learn something from them. Uh, if you are somebody who is one of the veterans, one of the certified cool kids, what's up? That means you watch every episode. Of course, you give the thumbs up on the videos on YouTube. You've commented on YouTube. you left reviews. You've done it all. But most importantly, you bought your supplies through me. Shining, uh, uh, unadulterated uh, plug for myself. But if you have... Uh, thank you so very, very much. It is because of you that 2020 was an awesome year. Um, and I hope this year is even better. So if you haven't bought in supplies through me or used me as your rep, I ask you, please do. I am a halfway decent guy and I'm even more halfway decent to deal with when you're uh, calling or texting me. So if you do want to, or you want a guy, a rep, somebody to deal with your uh, questions and put your orders in. It costs you nothing extra, of course, to have your own personalized rep. But give me a call, 862-312-2026. I'm just going all out with the, uh, the, the shameless plugs here for myself. But really, guys, that's how I make my cheddar and how I survive. So I love it when you guys order big or small, it doesn't matter. 862-312-2026. A couple of the most awesome people that I know, Aaron Ademski, what's going on, man? Uh, Taylor Mishler, what's up? Uh, Peter DeChesney, I think I got it right this time. I've given him shout outs before. He is like just an awesome, awesome, cool kid. And uh, I do appreciate uh, all you guys. Uh, I try to give shout outs randomly every week to somebody who is buying through me or somebody who's just awesome in general. So. Uh, there you go. But today on Nation, we're talking about the 10 ways to work smarter. Now, efficiency is key in what we do because if you think about it, we don't sell a product, we sell our time. So what's a time, your time worth? What's an hour of your time really worth? Now, we talked about worth uh, a little while ago and uh, uh, actually had a complaint from a, another uh, podcast out of... Uh, Europe somewhere maybe, that said that we were stealing all his ideas. I've never heard of the podcast. I've never listened to it, but apparently we were stealing all the ideas. So uh, I apologize for that. But that's why there's some changes in the names. We had to actually pull a video because uh, there was a copyright strike on that. But um, basically, efficiency is value. Value is what we work on. So 10 ways to work smarter would be how to be more efficient how to do things where we can create almost more time. Now, remember, if you're a one-man show, you have eh, eight hours, maybe 10 in an unhappy family, maybe 12 in a family that hates you. That was harsh. Uh, maybe not hates you, but, you know, 12-hour days, that's hard uh, to be away from the family. So what we want to do is, what if you could do 12 hours of work in eight hours, right? What if you have 20 people on staff, and you're running the show, wouldn't it be nice to get yourself a little bit more in a day? And that's what we're talking about, is how to kind of work smarter. Being that it's the beginning of the year, I personally always, uh, by the way, I don't own a company, a window cleaning company anymore. Uh, I sold that, as a lot of you know, uh, and I've been out of that now officially for about a year. But Every single year when we would start off the year, I would go ahead and um, plan everything out. I would go through and look at every single aspect. I would find out where our inefficiencies were and how to be better the next year. Now, January is the time. Now, I had a company in Wisconsin. So I don't know if you guys are in cold areas or warm areas. By the way, comment down below. Tell me what the temperature is 
right this second that you're watching this. I'd love to know if you're on YouTube, by the way. Um, and if you're not, go to YouTube comments. That's awesome for us. But if you're in a cold weather climate, you're kind of hanging out. We did snow removal, but as you know, Mother Nature can either be with you or against you. And lately, they've been against you as far as uh, continual snowfalls. So there was a lot of time to kind of revamp everything. And when you're busy, you can't necessarily focus on efficiencies because you're too busy working on focused on the entire project, making everything work. Right, being the conductor, or in most cases, the firefighter putting out fires and making sure that your entire company doesn't uh, crumble to the ground because of what your employees are doing. But here's a couple ways to be a little bit smarter in um, what you do. Now, remember, I'm just some dude that has a microphone, and uh, I don't even know if this is cardboard or what the backdrop is, it doesn't matter. I'm just some dude. So, whatever you decide to do in your company is, of course, the right thing to do because it's your company. That's why we got a business. So take it all with a grain of salt, but here's a couple ideas. Uh, number 10 in the top 10 ways to work smarter is logoed gear. Now, let me dive into that. We've talked about image a lot because I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of image. Oh, look at that. Another shameless blog. But here's the thing. When your guys or you have a clear logo, with the words window cleaning, don't put every service you have, don't write a book on your shirt, nobody cares. And a phone number or a website, even better. It's super easy to read, super clear, and as big as you can possibly get it, that works for you. That stops people from stopping. Do you have a card? Oh, do you have, I don't know how many times I could tell you when we were out in the field and people are taking pictures of the tech. I'm sorry, I'm just getting the information off your shirt. Great. That guy is continuing to work. He didn't stop. He didn't have to give a spiel. He didn't have to go back to the truck to get cards. He didn't have to whatever. Somebody got that off their shirt. Now, people driving by, walking by, people in other businesses, if you're doing route, all those people see it. Now, if you have neighbors that are nosy, somebody's working on your house, there's a bunch of people on ladders, they're going to look over. What are they doing? Oh, oh, window cleaning. Ah, okay. Whatever service you offer... That's the way to go. You got to put it on there, make it clear, put it out there, but let your clothing sell for you. Don't overdo it. I know the joke in the industry is you, the NASCAR guys out there that have these dye and Nile, their dye, I forget the second word, but the dyed shirts that are all super colorful and logos all, they're the hardest things to read. Yes, you look like there's water droplets on your bowling shirt, but... Problem is you can't read it. Now, that's not all of them. That's just a lot of them. If you have dyed shirts, those ones that are uh, completely covered, and you did it right, that's awesome. They're going to be super eye-catchy. They are going to grab attention. They will. But it has to be clear enough to tell somebody what you're trying to convey. So be clear, especially on your shirts. Don't write a book. Um, just put the service, maybe your logo so they recognize it in a website or phone number. That's it. Let it work for you. Uh, number nine in the uh, top 10 ways to work smarter is automate tasks. Uh, and I'm talking Facebook posts, Instagram posts, emails. Here's the thing. Social media is huge for interaction, for getting you out there, for sharing, for people going, ah, oh, yeah, I use those guys. Social media is huge. And if you don't believe me, what have you been doing all day? I guarantee you at some point today you've been on social media. And you go, well, yeah, but I'm on my friend's pages. I've never seen an ad. Yes, you have. It doesn't even have to be an ad. It can just be posts to keep active because people, when they search it, it'll index. You'll be able to pop that stuff up. But how do you do Facebook ads constantly? How do you do some awesome Instagram pictures? How do you do emails? How do you get those out there? That takes up a lot of time. Well, there's programs out there. If you haven't checked them out, one is called Constant Contact. Uh, I like MailChimp even better for emails. Um, if you have under a certain amount, it's free, but it's automated. So you sit down one day in your block of time and you go, okay, every you know first of the month, I'm going to do these emails for the month or I'm going to do whatever planning, maybe once a week, depending on how often you're sending, right? If you plan those out, you could put them all in there, load them in and say, I want this one to shoot out next Tuesday. I want this one to shoot out on the 15th. I want this one to shoot out on the 1st. You can do that and they will go through 
automatically sending things and staying regular. I'm guaranteeing that a lot of you, I'm not calling you out because again, everybody runs things a little different, but maybe are not even collecting email addresses. Maybe you haven't sent anything to anybody ever. Maybe you're thinking about the last time you sent an email and it was maybe four months ago. So it's very interesting. Don't sell, send an ad as an email. You're not, I don't want to see those. If they're junk, then I'm not going to look at it. But if they're cool, right? Maybe some eye-catchy pictures, a catchy title, right? If you're putting some work into those and just showing who you are, people may really, really like those. It helps people connect on a different level. Now, with Instagram and Facebook, there's programs like Hootsuite and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Buffer. Those are push sites. So you can load things up, all the posts you want, with tags, with everything, and then you can put it out and it will do those automatically. So when you're seeing companies and you're like, how are these guys doing posts twice a day every single day? Like, well, how do they have the time? Well, somebody sits down, spends an hour once a month and just puts them in there. Once a week, whatever they do, they just load them into the program, make a bunch of different ones, catchy things and always be relevant. Because here's the thing with media. As somebody who's done a pretty mediocre show for the past three and a half years, Content is not necessarily, uh, I'm going to help everybody every episode because you guys know there's some episodes that you will listen to and go, ah, that was good, you know, but I, I did know that, you know, I didn't get anything from it or you may not got a lot out of it. But the thing is constant uh, content, putting it out there. And the thing is, is that if you could put constant contact, right? So you're doing email, you're doing uh, Facebook, Instagram, people will always see you and they'll become fans of you and they'll know you on a personal level. A lot of you guys call me with questions. A lot of you guys send me texts and just be like, yo, dude, last year was awesome. I just want to say thank you. Or last year was awesome, man. I'm up 30%, whatever. Like you would not normally do that unless there was a connection, right? And I love it. I love seeing from you guys texts and things, just like talking about numbers and awesome moments, proud moments, bad moments, like that stuff's cool. It's being able to connect like that. And that's where social media does it. So look into automating your social media. Uh, number eight on the list of top 10 ways to work smarter is getting uh, credit cards for commercial and route clients. Now, hear me out. People say, well, yeah, but with the route, you know, it's so low that I can't pay fees on top of that. Well, here's the thing. Depending on your crop, your processor, you're spending maybe 50 cents max uh, per swipe. Uh, and then on little ones, you're spending like a couple more cents on the charge itself. You're not spending a lot of money, but what you are doing is you're saving time. You're saving time. Remember this thought, and we talked about this again on the Knowing Your Worth. That's a couple weeks back. Your time could be worth a ton, right? We talked about what is that hour worth to you if you sell a $100 a month job or a $100 a week job, right? And that you have that for 20 years. Your time was $20,000 for that hour, right? If you're doing pressure washing, you're making $100, $125 an hour. If you're doing roof cleaning, you're making $250 an hour, right? So collecting from someone going and actually going to the place and going, hey, by the way, uh, you know, we haven't gotten paid. I need that money. But that takes time. Say it's a 10 minute to get in your car, to drive. It's super close, but 10 minutes. It's a 10 minute drive back. That's 20 minutes. Maybe you're doing a phone call. That's two minutes, right? Five minutes if you got to wait on hold. All that time adds up. So getting a card is so worth it. And not everybody will do it. Of course, there's mom and pa that do till pay and things like that. But getting a credit card makes it so that, hey, just so you know, every time we do service, we're going to leave you with an invoice and we'll go ahead and charge it automatically. There's nothing for you to do. It doesn't, again, cost anything extra or anything like that. And it's actually going to save you a ton of time. So working smarter is getting credit cards. Now, people complain that route is such a tight, you know, money thing already. And I get that. I do get that. But... In the same side of it as you're doing uh, anywhere from $10 to $50, maybe a $100 uh, uh, purchase basically every time. You can work those numbers in and maybe that $10 job, you maybe lost a dollar in fees. It's not that high, by the way. But if you did, it's not the end of the world. That dollar constitutes one minute of your time and that is if you make $60 an hour. 
one minute of your time, you can't make a phone call, talk to somebody and hang up in a minute. You just can't. So getting credit cards is going to save you a ton, a ton. Um, require, I'm sorry, the number seven on the top 10 is requiring payment at the end of a job in residential. Now the two pair off each other because I think the collection side of um, any service business is something that a lot of people maybe don't focus necessarily on. Now, here's how I do it with houses. When we're all said and done, I'm going to give them, uh, I'm going to collect from them the satisfaction form, uh, any uh, gift cards or anything that they had, and of course, the check. Now, how I get that every single job is that it is in my speech in the very beginning. We show up to a job. Hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. Uh, I just wanted to go over a few things before we get going. Nice to meet you. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to tell them that everything is in the envelope and uh, the bad news. This is the invoice in here. Uh, when we are done with uh, uh, service today, we'll take that check back with us. You know, I say, fill out your satisfaction form. If there's any questions, let me know. Look over. There's also some um, other services in there that if you see anything that you want, let me know. I'll get you an estimate for it while I'm here. And I do that whole spiel. You can work on it however you want. But when I tell somebody, oh, and we'll be taking a check home with us when we leave, uh, and you can put that right back in the invoice there. I increase my collection on job, on site, to like 99 plus percent. It's very, very, very rare that somebody's like, oh my gosh, I, I just ran out of checks. Or, oh my gosh, I don't, oh, not a problem. You know, we take credit card. Oh, not a, we, oh my gosh, my purse is in my van and my van was taken by my, oh, not a problem. Did you want to call him right now and see if you can get that? Like, I'm going to get that because again, it takes time to collect. A lot of us have high rates or not even high rates but we have a lot of money out there that we need to collect on that's just money that's sitting there right you know your collectibles your accounts receivable what's sitting out there right now it's going to take work it's going to take letters emails calls whatever to get those guys to pay so you need to have them pay right at the job people always say well what if they're not home i do a lot of work people trust me and i trust them to give me the check okay if we're not there, I say, oh, Mrs. Jones, uh, after she says, oh, I won't be there, but you know the code is one, two, three, four. Oh, absolutely. And what I can do is actually take payment now so that I don't need to take it then. Or I would say, if you want to pay now with a credit card, we can certainly do that. Or if you want to leave a check the day of service, I can just pick that up when we leave. Letting somebody know your expectations will allow them to know that's how it happens. If you say, oh, did did you want to pay before we're done? Uh, did, you, did you want to pay... Like, at the time, did you want to leave a check then? Or, well, if you're not telling them, you're asking them. And then the answer could be anything. Oh, yeah, actually, you know, we'll just mail it to you. Just leave the invoice. Oh, okay. Well, you've lost the, you've lost it. But if you're not asking, you're telling them, hey, this is how we do things. And, oh, great. Well, now I know. I'll make sure to leave it. Very, very, very common. But taking that is going to take up a lot of your time. It's going to make you work smarter. So there you go. Require payment at the end of the job on Resi. Uh, the number six way to work smarter is going to be the float board. Now, we talked about a floater board quite a bit, and I don't know that a lot of you um, are using it necessarily, but what it is, the concept, is a big whiteboard. And I got lines on that whiteboard, and I got a uh, date, and I got the service, and I got the name. Easy, right? What it is, is on that board, I put anything like gutter cleaning, outside window cleaning, uh, any service that people don't have to necessarily be home that I don't need to schedule a actual appointment I put on that floater board. But how does that make you work smarter? Here's how. With a floater board, if there's gutters or there's outsides or there's anything, when your crews are out there and somebody cancels or they don't answer, they forgot about the appointment, say uh, it was supposed to rain so everybody's trying to cancel on you and they don't care about your rain guarantee, all that fun stuff, you need to fill those spots. Oh, absolutely. Let me give it two off the floater board. Let me give you one off the people call. Hey, it's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. We're done. Um, what else do we got? Right? All I need to do then is go ahead and send them. I just send them over uh, another invoice, basically. Oh, cool. Hey, stop back. Uh, I'll have everything printed and ready for you. Somebody stops. The guy runs in. I hand them the envelopes, and they go. It fills space. It keeps your schedule heavy, which is what you want, and you don't have people sitting around. Busy time of year, you don't want somebody leaving at 3 in the afternoon. Busy time of year, somebody cancels in the morning, now you have a 3 or 4 hour appointment with a crew, and you're like, well, what are we doing? Fill it with floater. I'm telling you, the floater is awesome. Start a floater. Whiteboard, 
make a couple lines, record the information. And what I do when I talk to people, if somebody calls and says they want gutters, I say, well, great. Uh, what we're going to do is put you on our floater board. And that just means that we're going to get you as soon as possible, but we don't need to plan a schedule with you or appointment. What we will do is leave an invoice. You know that we're there. And if you have any questions, you could definitely let me know. We'll get that on there right now and blah, 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 blah. Right? If you're on a floater board, I'll take a credit card at the time of booking. The credit card itself, that way when we're all said and done, you're still going to get the uh, paid invoice from it, but we'll just run that card. You won't even have to worry about it. It just saves you that time. Floater board is awesome. The number five way to work smarter in the top 10 is plan a route on a weekly schedule, not a monthly schedule. And we talk about route a little bit, and I know a lot of you guys don't do route. By the way, if you do route, put it down below uh, in the same comment or a different comment. Just comment. Comments help us a ton, by the way. Uh, Ryan Fuster with the thumbs up, right? Um, uh, but... Uh, the weekly schedule difference between monthly is not just because everybody goes, well, yeah, you're trying to get two extra weeks out of the year, right? Because technically, if you schedule, you know, uh, every week, it's four times 12 is 48. You actually have four extra weeks in the year when you realize that weeks stagger in the month. You get four extra payments depending on, say, like you're doing weekly. Yes, technically, but the big thing is for scheduling. If I know that every single month or every single batch of weeks, every two weeks I do this, it doesn't matter where the month lands, it doesn't matter what lands on the month, it doesn't matter what else is planned, I don't need to worry about any of that because it's every single two weeks, it's every single week, right? Every week I know if the first job I do for that week is uh, you know, Cold Stone Creamery, on that Monday, that's my week starting. Then I know that the second week is always going to be, you know, Applebee's. Those are my two weeks. And if I did Applebee's on Monday, next week I'm starting with Cold Stone, right? Those are building super, super strong routes. The thing is, is every two weeks you can plan super easy. They stagger. You know your route. You can put them in there super tight. When you push a single you know, somebody that's in their weekly, then you have to move that around in the week. It doesn't, that weekly job won't always be on a Monday at, at three in the afternoon. And then the next week be a Monday at a three afternoon because other things change and you want your routes to be tight. So every two weeks is really how that rotation happens. Even if it's a weekly account, it'll be on different days of the week, but do that plan a route weekly instead of monthly. And I'm telling you, you're going to love it. Uh, the number four way to be uh, smarter or work smarter, and I'm talking really fast, I apologize. But it's, um, it is uh, using a service like Good Job. Now, people uh, always, after I talk about Good Job, uh, they uh, send me something and say, oh, do you have um, a uh, code or anything like that? And I don't. A lot of times, uh, companies will be like, oh man, I know you're talking about, here's a code so your people can save money. That's awesome, right? I got some for responsive it and a few other things. Uh, but uh, I don't have anything for good job. I've never talked to good job about that. So I'm sorry I don't have anything for good job themselves. But they're an awesome, awesome service. And here's what happens. When you are making calls and trying to collect uh, reviews, reviews sell. If you're in the phone, not the phone book, dummy. I'm so old, right? Uh, if you're on the first page of Google, right, and they see that listing up and one person has three five-star reviews and the other person has 320, they're going to be like, whoa, 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 that's the company. Look at all the, right? That is the way reviews work. Reviews are huge. It's pure accountability. Your people around you are telling you you're doing awesome work. But the hard thing about it is to get people to do reviews. And now I could say that because if you've been on windowcleaner.com, there's like our resin. We sell like thousands of cubic feet a year. It has like one review, right? There's not always a great option to get reviews on that product. But you look at Amazon. If you buy anything on Amazon or ever have, you've looked at the reviews. Reviews are powerful, but they're hard to get. Use a program like Nice Job, and it takes that headache off of you. It makes you work smarter because they're the ones doing that. You input the information, and you move on. Working smarter means optimizing your time, and Good Job does that. Check them out. Uh, goodjob.com, I think. No, goodjob.ca. 
Search it. Good job. Uh, they're good. Um, the number three way on the top 10 ways to work smarter is a marketing calendar. This is another one that we talk about quite a bit because I think a lot of people aren't utilizing it. They maybe haven't registered. They maybe haven't sat down to do it. But a marketing calendar puts out the entire year of what's going to happen when, right? Every second Monday, I'm doing a Craigslist post first thing on Monday. You know, uh, after busy part starts, by the way, remember your marketing calendar is not like, oh, that's uh, June 1st. You see June 1st. No, no. What it is, is it all is there in your weeks of busy, right? We have nine months of busy, say, or say that you have, um, you know, whatever the structure is, you know, your weekly schedule. But the big thing is, is that's going to change depending on uh, when your first uh, snow is, that will end things, and when spring starts. So keep that in mind. But a marketing calendar puts it out there so you don't forget what you're trying to do and when. You don't forget, oh man, I haven't sent out EDDM in a while, right? All of that is very, very important. All of that is one of those things that a lot of people miss, but it's super important. Putting a marketing calendar helps you stay on task and it doesn't it, it takes away you having to think about it every week. Ah, oh, what should I do this week? It's there. It's done. It took you an hour to do it in the beginning of the year. Now's the time to do it, by the way. Marketing calendar. The number two way to work smarter, in my opinion, is a five up. Now a five up is this. You do a job here, you do you hand out a brochure in my case, I do uh, door hangers. One to the left, one to the right, and the three across the street. So now there's a six house thing. You did one house and you handed it out to five. Five ups. That is super, super important. Why? Because everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses. That's kind of known. And that's cool. We want to cater to that. But the big thing is is that if somebody sees that you were there, they don't necessarily see that who you were or they can't read that shirt or whatever. So handing out those, seeing somebody's do, oh, wow, somebody here got uh, windows done. I use the pardon our glare one, which is great. It basically states, hey, sorry for the pardon our glare, but we just cleaned your neighbor's house, so there may be some extra sun in your area, something like that. And basically what that does is it puts out the information of who you are, what you do, and that somebody used you, so there's a little bit of accountability there in the neighborhood. It gets people talking, too. Five ups are super, super valuable. It gets that information out there to an area you're already doing work. And then the other thing is is that I've done, I couldn't tell you how many five ups, where all of a sudden I get a call and somebody's like, Hey, uh, this is uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, I'm actually in the HOA here. I got uh, four houses here um, that uh, I wanted to have it done. And we got your brochure, so we found out who the person was and... We got four of them. Is there any kind of discount? Heck yeah. If I could be in one neighborhood on one street and do all the neighbors, that's like rut work, man. No drive time, no pack up, clean up. I'm just walking the stuff to the next place. Yeah, I'll give you a discount for that. And you're sending four houses. That's awesome. Five ups are super important. If you haven't checked it out, WCR, windowcleaner.com has printing. It's w or uh, windowcleaner.com forward slash printing. Go there and get printing and it's super, super awesome. Or let me know and I can put your printing stuff in too. Um, but they have uh, uh, door hangers and they're super, super cheap. So something to keep in mind. Uh, and the number one way of the top 10 ways to work smarter, in my opinion, in my opinion, is SEO work. SEO your site. The thing with websites is you could have the best looking Ferrari, right? The best looking website. If that Ferrari just sits in your garage and no one ever sees it and you never drive it, then it doesn't matter that it's super nice. It'd be the same thing as if you had like a 82 Corolla, right? If it just sits in your garage and you don't drive it, then it doesn't really matter what the car is because you're not utilizing it anyway. That is SEO. You may be super proud of your website. You may have paid a lot of money for your website. Maybe you got a website guy, but you're not utilizing SEO. If you're not utilizing SEO, no one will go to your website unless you have them find your website. The thing with a website is, is that it is almost like a flyer, where in a flyer, nobody can look at your flyer unless they ask for your flyer, right? Hey, can I have this flyer? 
if you took those flyers and you put them at every single store in your city, every lobby, right, every bar, every one of those flyer things, and it's all over, all of a sudden people are finding your flyers, right? They see it, oh, window clean, uh, and they'll find your flyer. Now they're not asking you for your flyer, which is in turn asking for your website address or knowing your website address, but they're finding it on their own. You're going to get a lot more people that way, and it's a passive thing. Your website is going to be your number one way that you earn business outside of referrals. By the way, I said that one time that it's your number one way to get uh, new work and everybody was like, yeah, referrals. Well, referrals, of course. But I'm talking about advertising, real advertising. Your website will be it if it's SEO'd correctly and if it looks good. If it looks like a dumpster fire, then nobody's really going to look at that. By the way, again, uh, I don't have codes or anything. Uh, but Justin Monk's done a bunch of my sites. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Ph- phenomenal. Uh, he does such good work, and SEO stuff is amazing. There's packages all over the place. It's not as expensive as you think. There is, obviously, if you want to like rank ridiculous, then yeah, you could probably spend a lot. But SEO guy, I would rather have an SEO guy than a website guy, which, by the way, he does both for me or did. Um, but uh, yeah, let him know, by the way, that Jersey sent you, and he might hook you up. Or he'll charge you more. I don't know. But get a good SEO guy and get their website out there. Let that thing work for you. So either way, that's our show for the week. Happy 2020 again. Before you go, if you need supplies, please let me know. I would love that. Shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. Just be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I promise you that works. That's what most people actually do. Uh, I'll send you a text back probably saying awesome and, uh, you know, a lot of explanation or exclamation points. And then I'm going to tell you, are you still at 123 Fake Street? And uh, your total is blah, blah, blah with tax and free shipping if you're over the 49. Also, uh, is card 1234 good? I'm just going to verify those bits of information because you never know when somebody's like, oh, my address is good. And they don't know what the address was. And like, oh, my gosh, it's right. I didn't change it. So I'm going to verify that. Is that easy? It's literally two texts. And then when it's done, I'll be like, yo, it's golden. Man, you did awesome. Thank you so much. High five, blah, 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 blah. And tell me, remind me to give you a sticker. I'll just throw it in the box absolutely free. And these are exclusive, limited edition, fancy, blah, blah, blah stickers uh, that I ordered too much of anyway. So what we're doing is we're going to have a new design all the time. Um this batch we're still on the first iteration because we ended up um i didn't but uh, people ordering uh here uh ended up ordering like a ton so we're going through them but let me know get your sticker it helps me out costs you nothing extra and now you got a guy in the industry 862-312-2026 is my number so Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Hopefully you're going to be a little bit uh, intrigued or you're going to change some things. Hopefully you're going to work smarter. But more importantly, hopefully you go out there and be epic.